right to the stage suggestion via Discord. Uh, let's go ahead and jump into it. Let's see where this video takes us, guys. Uh, definitely sounds intriguing. All right, welcome back in Alive Now. I'm Austin Westfall. This one's cool. Take a look. Okay. NASA's Mars rover, Perseverance, has uncovered rocks that may hold potential signs of ancient microscopic life. That's according to scientists reporting this on Wednesday. NASA says that this is the closest we've come to discovering ancient life on Mars, although they do stress that in-depth analysis is needed before reaching any conclusions. Obviously. Professor Ken Gailey is with the Department of Physics and Astronomy at the University of Iowa. I got to ask you, what if there was life on Mars, Ken? What do we stand to learn from such a thing? What yeah, that's a great be? question, and it, it may take a little time before what we get to the bottom of it, but it would be undoubtedly the most incredible scientific discovery of all time if we discovered life on another planet and uh, I'll give you that. I, I think that uh, the significance is is different maybe for different people but the big question that most astronomers I think have is is just how common is life in the universe you know we know there's life on the earth uh, but the universe is a gigantic place if, if earth was the only planet that had life in the whole universe it would be a remarkable waste of space so we think that there's probably life elsewhere, but we don't know how common it is. Is it one planet per galaxy, or is is almost every planet uh, having some form of life? It's it's hard to say. Definitely sounds like he's kind of going through like the the, the trials and tribulations of of a person who has who has encountered the Fermi paradox for the first time here, guys. Uh, it definitely feels like that. Uh, I agree. I mean, listen. Um, uh, Earth cannot be the only planet, let's say, with some type of life form. We also need to kind of adjust our expectations of how we would probably define life in the first place here, right? Um, so if we're talking about life like us, right, humanoid, uh, you know, bipedal, et cetera, et cetera, then I, we may be, there may not be many of those guys, right? But if we talk about life as in some, some type of like microscopic thing, uh, then we'll probably have more of a chance to encounter that. Or if we uh, even call life some plant species, et cetera, et cetera, right? Um, I think that's probably much more plausible. We'll probably find that a lot you know, earlier. Um, there are a lot of planets that are kind of within the uh, the, the Goldilocks zone of their star, their, their, their parent star. Uh, so it is definitely very plausible at the very least that um, th we would probably find some type of life by some means, let's say, specifically uh, on one of those planets, guys, maybe one of the Keplers or something. So that's uh, one of the main reasons that we have the Perseverance rover rolling around on the surface of Mars is it's looking for evidence of past life and possibly even present life on Mars. Present life but it's probably not you know, little green men that are going to pop up and introduce <laughs> no. themselves and ask to be shown to our leader. It's probably going to be microbial life or, or even the evidence or the footprints of microbial life. And so the, the announcement that you're describing right now is, is more around that. It's a potential footprint of microbial life. We're not going to find Marvin the Martian. That's no. unfortunate to hear. What are the actual signs that were found? Something to do with carbon, correct? Okay, we got some Yeah, well, uh, certainly organic matter. The, the key things that are thought to be needed for life are liquid water and, mm -hmm. and organic matter. But we, we know there's liquid water on Mars. It's probably right. under the surface. It's very... Allegedly. Not much on the surface. But there is some evidence that there was once liquid water on the surface of Mars. And there's plenty of organic matter. So those basic ingredients are there, but what's missing is that they're coming together. Oh, that guy got made fun of. They're in the way. Uh, you, you don't even see him, but his name is very intriguing. I'm not going to show it. That you need to have life. Life is a very special process. It's a it complex is. microchemical process. And uh, and we want to see evidence that that is happening, not just the presence of water and the presence of, of carbon. And so uh, one type of process we're looking for is the process by which cells get energy. Okay. And that's that's called respiration. If if they of the two forms, aerobic and anaerobic. So aerobic respiration is what we're doing right now. We breathe air from the atmosphere, and what we do is we combine that air with organic material. And here's how it works: organic material has electrons in it that it's not affinite. It doesn't. It's not very closely bonded to it. It's easy to give up those electrons, and it gives those electrons to the oxygen that we breathe. And the oxygen just loves to have electrons, so it releases energy when we do that. And that's the fundamental way that we get energy. We stand up and walk across the room by pushing electrons from organic matter into oxygen. That's called aerobic respiration. That's definitely a very, very simple way to put it. But I love the fact that you put it as simple as humanly possible. But there isn't free oxygen in Mars. No. So the microbes on Mars would need a different type, which is called anaerobic respiration. 
And anaerobic respiration can work in many ways, but one way it can do it is it can take organic matter and it can push the electrons into sulfur. Sulfur doesn't have quite the affinity for electrons that oxygen has, but it still releases energy if you put electrons into the sulfur from the organic matter. And where you find the sulfur is in compounds like sulfate. And when you push the electrons into the sulfate and release energy, it turns it into a different kind of a compound called a sulfide. And so that's the basic footprint that they're looking for is sulfates, which He's are like good. Who a is source of energy that can be used by organic matter in a wet environment and turn it into sulfides. And so this Perseverance rover is in a place called the Yezero Crater, which is thought to be a wet environment. We see sedimentary rock that looks like it was deposited in water. And in that rock, we see these features called poppy seeds and leopard spots. And the Mars scientists love to name things after what they look like. And, you know, obviously these are all new water poppy seeds, water leopard spots, but they're, they're mineral deposits that involve sulfates and sulfides. And, and they're in an environment where there's organic material and water. Right. So these are the basic fundamental footprints that you could have for anaerobic respiration. Now, it's not the only way to make these minerals. So NASA is not saying we have discovered the smoking gun of, of life. Right, obviously they can't. But it is, you know, life will be discovered on Mars in stages. And the first stage was the discovery of water, and that's pretty much I mean, already happened. I mean, yes and no, guys. I mean, I'm, I'm not really sure we're ever going to find any type of, like, actively living life on Mars. Um, there could be some variant, uh, potentially something that came from a really long distance away and just has has the ability to actually kind of, like, you know, thrive, let's say, in this type of environment. Potentially, right? Maybe. Uh, right? But it's going to be nothing that we would, I think, en masse consider uh, any form of life, but um, if it's still actively alive, that'll be that'll probably be more impressive, right? Let's just say that there. Um, but uh, but again, the title is ancient life, so it would have to be something that is that is you know, met its demise at some time. Because like, imagine if we started finding like uh, like fossilized, uh, you know, dinosaur type bones, let's say on Mars. Now, guys, it makes all the sense in the world that Mars, uh, you know, once had something. Right. Uh, but I do think that uh, Mars itself is more of a museum to us. Right. It's, it's like a thing that um, will tell us what we will be when when a solar flare finally destroys the uh, planet Earth or uh, and or uh, let's say the I don't know, the Earth stops spinning and all the water rushes to the north and south pole specifically uh, destroying any and everything on Earth. Basically, if you can't swim, you're done, guys. Right. Um, there are a couple of like massive like ELE type of uh things, extinction level events, right? That could potentially happen, right? It definitely frightens me. I'll tell you this right now. I mean, I was having a conversation with my seven-year-old son kind of about ELEs the other day. Uh, he was telling me some awesome, some, some other awesome ones potentially. Uh, but guys, listen, um, if there is life, it's not it's not alive anymore, guys. That's my opinion. And I'm, I'm gonna basically stick with that unless uh, there was some random asteroid that that came from, I don't know, a, a planet, uh, exploding let's say and then shooting into space and, and it, ha it just so happened to have some bit of life uh it was able to, to to kind of live in outer space for a little while and then it hit mars and it kind of you know came back to life if that makes any sense but other than that yeah i don't, I don't really i have no faith in us finding anything alive on mars happen and the next stage will be the discovery of the actual microchemical processes of life and so this is really the first example of that second kind of of stage of discovery so it's, it's kind of a big deal, although, you know, again, we're not 100% sure by any means that this is life on Mars, but it's what you'd want to see. Right, it's a building block. It is, or was anyway, it's a building life blocks. on Mars. Something that I think gets lost on people sometimes is they don't realize that these rovers are massive. This thing is the size of a car. Um, it's got, uh, I think, four and a half years of mileage on it so far. It's been roaming since 2021, I believe. It carries a drill, it penetrates rocks, and then it has tubes to hold the samples that it gathers. My question is, how do they get those samples back home? That's what needs to happen in order to make that confirmation of life, correct? Yeah, yeah, good point. Yeah, yeah. so right now, all of these discoveries that we're talking about have been done with the technology that they That's built there, into the rover. Right. And so they knew that that would be the first stage, would be to see this evidence. But they also knew that the best thing to do would be to analyze the samples in a laboratory. And that will require getting it back to Earth. But there was not really a plan for how yeah, we were going to do that. Good luck with that. 
when the rover was sent. The rover is collecting the materials and it's getting them ready to be tra to be transported back to Earth. But uh, to actually do that is a whole other mission. And there have been proposals, uh, but they're very expensive. Oh, yeah. And so at the moment, NASA does not have a clear plan on how it's going to do this. But uh, when it does have a plan, those those samples will be ready and it will be very exciting to get them back here to laboratories on Earth. I guess the final question here, a lot of people have this question. I think a lot of people are curious to know how soon could Earthlings be on the red planet? Oh, Is no. that something that's within the near future? Uh, no, guys. Yeah, that's that's a question that's, that's uh, it's very fiction tough to answer. I mean, we, it's important to recognize that Mars does not have much of an atmosphere. It has some, but not much. So right. it's a lot different from an environment on Earth that could really be supportive of life. You're going to need a, a spacesuit if you're on the surface in, in an environment that's protecting you from the dangers of space. So it would not be anything like life on the surface of our own planet. Guys, it would certainly be a, a remarkable no. experience to be able to walk around on the surface of Mars. I'll give you that. But right now, NASA's plan is to use robots to do this because robots don't need yeah. air to breathe and so forth. And so yeah. we can do a lot with robots. And that's the Hold current on. plan is to use robots as if they were scientists. It's not as good as having an Earthling walking around. Uh, but, oh. but the prospects for actually living there, uh, like a whole life, is, uh, is uh, I think, a, a ways off from the where we are dream, right guys. now. Love talking about the... Okay, yeah, okay, 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 okay. Guys, this is like my favorite topic in the world, okay? I'm glad that someone said be something space, astrophysics, you know, physics, uh, you know, biology. I love science. I'm a science nerd, guys, by default, okay? Understand this here. All right, so now listen, guys, we're not going to Mars, all right? I, I understand. I, I get it. Let's go to Mars, right? Like, but, but we're not going to Mars, guys, all right? Our bodies are not meant for that. Our bodies are meant for this specific environment. Like, do you understand how much radiation is in, is in space, guys? Like, do you, like... First of all, it's going to have to be a specific time when Mars is like the closest to us. That'll be probably number one here. Uh, we'll have to figure that out, which we've already pretty much mapped that out because that's the reason why uh, these things are on Mars, right? Because we've already mapped that out. We can get to Mars, right? Uh, but I do think that the only real way successfully for us to ever experience these type of things uh, is just like this guy here, Ken, just said here. Um, the most important thing is to send a robot, bro. Our bodies are just not meant for it. Like I was thinking like uh, I had a dream um, a couple of years ago that, that never left me here. I'm trying to figure out, like, how could we, in fact, travel to another planet, like, successfully? How could we actually do that? Uh, it would have to be something like, you know, straight out of sci-fi also. I'm about to reference one of the greatest shows in the history of shows that have ever existed in TV history. All right, if you say that it is not the greatest show, then you're, almost, you're wrong. Uh, it, you're wrong, sirs and madams, okay? You're wrong. Uh, Stargate SG-1. So now listen, hear, hear me out here. Uh, Stargate SG-1 had replicators, right? Basically, um, there were things that were created to, to basically populate the Earth and, and, and other planets. Let's just say that they're, um, they were not created on Earth, but they were created somewhere else, potentially, either way. Um, yeah, you would need to create something that had the ability to, for the most part, self-replicate with uh, whatever materials or minerals uh, uh, that are on the host or... or you have a host planet, let's just say that there, all right? Then also have the ability to create a propulsion device using things that are on the host planet, right? Uh, create itself, recreate itself, and then take off and find another place, right? I think that would probably be the only way, but how do we create such a thing here, guys? It's just sci-fi, right? Uh, a robot that has the ability to build another robot. I mean, I guess it wouldn't be that hard potentially, right? Uh, but you'd have to do a lot of... A lot of stuff here, guys. A lot of stuff for for this to happen. Um, but either way, guys, I don't really think that. Look, let me just kind of reiterate my, reiterate my point here. Okay, we're not going to Mars, not anytime soon. You have to figure out how you're going to keep your legs and your muscles working, right? Like, how does that happen during the process of you going, right? In in zero g, how do you do that? Create some type of Know, gravity device that gives you earth gravity while in the ship but we can't even do that with the international space station so what do we do here guys all right there are a couple of we have a couple of issues here let's just say that there uh specifically with getting to mars here um i have encountered uh, one of the mars ro rovers uh in real life uh but not specifically one of the ones that actually went to mars um this was in cape canaveral i went uh i took my son um to cape canaveral uh, like two years ago or so 
Um, greatest time in the history of times, guys. I love this type of stuff. But either way, listen, guys, if you guys are new here, please like and subscribe. Uh, in the meantime, I will catch you guys later. Uh, later, guys. Thank you.